The last thing we learned first semester was how to find the area between functions and the area inside polar curves. So for the area between functions, we looked at two different setups, either the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx, where f of x represented the larger y values, and g of x represented the smaller y values. So we often talked about this as top minus bottom. We also looked at it sideways, which meant we looked at the interval from a to b of f of y minus g of y dy. Um, and similarly, f of y represented the larger x values, and g of y represented the smaller x values. And we discussed this as right minus left instead. And then we had our formula for the area of polar curves, which was the integral from a to b, one half r squared d theta. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the setups rather than actually integrating it out. The first example I want to look at is a dx example, which is find the area between y equals x squared and y equals 4x minus x squared. So the first thing you want to do is to graph it so you get an orientation of the curves. y equals x squared looks like this. The second one, if you factor out an x, 4 minus x, you have roots at x equals 0, x equals 4. And because of the negative x squared, this is an upside down parabola. So we're interested in this region right here. So first thing you want to do is find where the functions intersect. So if you set the two functions equal to each other, x squared equals 4x minus x squared. Uh, and that becomes 2x squared minus 4x equals 0. Factor out the 2x, x minus 2 equals 0. So they intersect at x equals 0 and x equals 2. And then I usually draw a rectangle in for reference. So the integral for this one is going to be the integral from 0 to 2. The upper function, the top of my rectangle, is being defined by the upside down parabola, 4x minus x squared. The lower side of the rectangle is being bounded by my right side up parabola, x squared. And so that is our first integral. Now for a couple of dy's. So the first one says the area bounded by the x-axis, y equals x minus 2, and y equals root x. So if I graph this, y equals x minus 2 would look something like this. y equals root x would look something like this and the x-axis right here. So this region here, notice it's easier to do in terms of dy instead of dx's, because if I did a dx, my rectangle here would be bounded by the square root and the x-axis, and my rectangle here would be bounded by the square root and the y. So we're not going to do a dx. I'm going to practice a dy with this. And if I draw in a dy rectangle, it's going to go like this. Notice this one is always bounded by the line on the right-hand side and always bounded by the square root on the left-hand side. So first thing I have to do is find out where these two functions intersect. So I'm going to set x minus 2 equal to root x, square both sides, x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals x, x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0, factor, and you get x equals 1 and x equals 4. Um, now let's take a look at where these are. So when x equals 1, you get y equals 1, which is right here. Uh, x equals 1, y equals 1. So that's in our extraneous root. You get x equals 4, y equals 2, and that's our position right there. And the extraneous root comes from because we squared both sides with this answer. So we have this point here at 4 comma 2, and obviously we're interested here when y equals 0. So the next thing I have to do is solve for equations in terms of y. So the first one becomes x equals y plus 2. The second one becomes x equals y squared. And so our integral is going to go from y equals 0 to y equals 2. The right side of this green rectangle is the line. So y plus 2. The left side of the green rectangle is bounded by my square root function. So y squared dy. So the integral from 0 to 2 of y plus 2 minus y squared 
dy is going to find that area. Now, and now I'm going to set up another one which involves finding a line that divides an area in half. So in the second example here, I have the region between x equals y squared minus 4y plus 3, and x equals 1 minus y is divided in half by the line y equals b. Find b. So the same thing, I'm going to graph this. Uh, and so if I factor the first one, x equals y squared minus 4y plus 3 factors into y minus 3 and y minus 1. So I have intercepts at y equals 1, y equals 3. This is a y square parabola. So it opens to the right. And then if I graph this line, x equals 1 minus y. That's the same as y equals 1 minus x. So y equals 1 minus x is going to look something like this. And now I need to find that entire area and then find the line that's going to divide it in half. So same thing, I'm going to set up a dy for this one. So the formula is going to look like this. The entire thing would be the intersection of the two curves. So we've got to find where they intersect. So let's see, since they're both x equations, let's set the two equal to each other. 1 minus y equals y squared minus 4y plus 3 y squared minus 3y plus 2 equals 0, y minus 2, y minus 1 equals 0, so y equals 1 and 2. So the entire area would be the interval from y equals 1 to y equals 2 of the line 1 minus y minus the parabola minus y squared minus 4y plus 3. I want half of that to equal the integral from 1 to b of the same expression. 1 minus y minus the quantity y squared minus 4y plus 3 dy. So now I have the area from 1 to b equal half the entire area. And there's different ways to set this up. You could go from 1 to b and b to 2, set them equal to each other. Or you can make the second integral here and set it from 1 to b, from b to 2. All right, so the last thing I want to look at are different polar examples. So given r equals square root of 2 minus 2 cosine theta, I want to set up an interval to represent the inner loop, the outer loop, and then my last slide will be a common interior, common exterior, that kind of a thing. So first thing you have to do is figure out what values actually trace the inner loop so that you can calculate the area of it. So notice that when theta equals 0, we get r equals square root of 2 minus 2, which is a negative number. And that means that theta equals 0, I'm at this point right here. So to trace the inner loop, I need to figure out when the polar curve hits the origin. So the origin when is when r equals 0. So square root of 2 minus 2 cosine theta equals 0. Cosine theta equals root 2 over 2. Theta equals pi over 4. So I know between theta equals 0 and theta equals pi over 4, I've traced out that lower um, half of the inner loop, which means that if I calculate the area between theta equals 0 and theta equals pi over 4, I'm going to get this area right there. So I'm going to use that and then double the answer. So my interval is going to go from 0 to pi over 4, 1 half my function, minus 2 cosine theta squared d theta, and then I'm going to double that answer to get the entire loop. So similarly, if I look over here, the outer loop well, I know at theta equals pi over 4, I'm at the pole. And then what happens is the function keeps going this way. And now I have to figure out what value it is at that point right there. So at that point is when theta equals pi. Because when theta equals pi, cosine theta is negative 1, and I get root 2 plus 2, which is my largest possible value. So for the outer loop, I'm going to take the integral from pi over 4 to pi, one half of the function, square root of 2 minus 2 cosine theta squared, d theta. And same thing, I'm going to double it because the interval from pi over 4 to pi over, or from pi over 4 to pi would sketch these sectors in. I notice I would find half of the outer loop, and then I would double the answer. Now notice between pi over 4 and pi, 
it's tracing, it's filling up the area for the inner loop as well. So it's not like I have to add an extra inner loop for it. The last thing I want to do are some um, combination of regions. So here I have the graph of r equals 3 and r equals 2 plus 2 sine theta. The first thing I want to do is find the common interior region, so inside the circle and inside the cardioid, which would be this region right here. So same thing, I'm going to find where the two intersect. So if I set 2 plus 2 sine theta equal to 3, you get sine theta equals 1 half, which is when theta equals pi over 6. So that means at pi over 6, those two curves actually intersect. Now I've got to figure out what graph to use for what particular range of theta value. So same thing. Notice from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 6, which is right there. My common interior, for my common interior region, I want to follow the path made by the cardioid because that's that curve right there. So the first part is going to be the graph from 0, or sorry, not from 0. Uh, no, actually, at that point, it's not equal to 0. My mistake. So I have to figure out when the cardioid is at the origin. So at this point, 2 plus 2 sine theta equals 0. Sine theta equals negative 1. So theta equals 3 pi over 2. But I need a value less than pi over 6. So instead of 3 pi over 2, I'm going to use negative pi over 2. So my first integral is going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 6. 1 half 2 plus 2 sine theta squared d theta. And I want to double that. So I get the other side of it as well. Now, then I have to figure out which curve I'm going to use. So from pi over 6 to this top point, Notice my common interior region uses the circle. So my second integral is going to go from pi over 6. This point up here is when the circle is at pi over 2. 1 half 3 squared d theta. And same thing, I'm going to double that. So technically what I did was I found the area between negative pi over 2 and pi over 6 of the cardioid, which would be this region right here. And then from pi over 6 to pi over 2 of the circle, which would be this region right there. And then I doubled the answer for the final. So you really have to be careful what values of theta you use. Don't assume it's just because it's at the pole is when theta equals 0 and that kind of stuff. Now, let's say I want the area inside r equals 3, but outside r equals 2 plus 2 sine theta. So inside r equals 3 means inside the circle. Outside of r equals 2 plus 2 sine theta would be this region right here. Now I need the points where they intersect, but I found that in the last example. So up here is theta equals pi over 6. And then if I wanted to, I could find this value here, which is when theta equals 5 pi over 6. Now, this one's a little bit different because notice the region that I'm interested in uses the same theta value. Um, between theta equals pi over 6 and uh, 5 pi over 6. I have to be careful again because I can't just write the integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 because that's actually going to trace this part right here. And what I need is I need this part down here. So we have a couple of options. Instead of going from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, I could go from the negative version of this which would be negative 7 pi over 6 to pi over 6. And then I want the area between those two defined by the circle, 1 half 3 squared d theta. So that would find this entire region. But then what I want to do is I want to subtract from that the area defined by the cardioid. So then I have to subtract from this the integral from negative 7 pi over 6 to pi over 6, 1 half of 2 plus 2 sine theta squared. Okay. And that should find me the area that's inside the circle, so that would be the red part, and then subtract from it the cardioid, which would be 
this part right there.